Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to continue diving deep into mixing paint. As you know, my favorite has always been using the brush tool and the eyedropper. Very simple. Well, last week we talked about the smudge tool as an alternative, and today we're going to do the exact same exercise, but we're going to use the mixer brush. So if we look here, I've created a little tool preset, and I'm going to show you the exact same thing as I did with smudge brush. I'm going to start by keeping a sharp edge and carefully smudge it out into a wider and wider transition until it's a big fade. Now it's hard to know if this is going to show through on the recording or not, but one thing you'll immediately notice is that this has a little bit of texture. That sets it apart from the smudge tool. I'm going to do it one more time here with color so you can see how that looks. So I'm using just the diameter and my application of pressure. That's how I'm giving this control here. Don't have to do any sampling. Okay, I'm very satisfied with the way that's looking. And one more time, I'm going to show it here on more of a real painting scenario. So I'm working on new layers. They are set to sample all layers, so I can you know blend however I want to blend and then delete that and it won't disrupt the original artwork. But here using a large diameter, I'm really able to get a very nice um, soft transition, but one with a little bit of grit to it, a little bit of texture, which is exactly what I'm hoping for. And I'm going to switch then to the eraser tool and kind of carve away what I don't need. And I think before I showed using kind of the soft edge shadow that transitioned into the tight edge shadow. You can see just how quick and easy that is using the mixer brush. And then finally I'm going to use an even bigger diameter and kind of fade out that horizon line. And then switch back to the eraser tool and carve away what I don't need. So I'm very satisfied with that. I would say Superficially, it gives a pretty similar look to the smudge tool, but it feels a little different. And next, I'm going to show you how to make your own, and I think you'll start to understand why. Now, if you haven't watched the last video, I encourage you to do so, because I'm going to go a little bit more quickly through the steps this time and really just focus on where it's different from the smudge tool. So the smudge tool had fewer options. In fact, I'll say significantly fewer options. What I would do is I would go make a mixer brush and start by copying the settings I have in the top panel here. I found that this is actually less of an impact than what we're going to change over here in the brush palette. So just copy the 4, 65, 5, and 99. Those numbers are just a good starting point. Also note that I have sample all layers checked, and I have the clean after each uh, stroke checked. So it should be a little solid gray thing there. Okay, with all that said, you'll notice here in the brush palette that we have texture. And that's really, I think, what separates the mixer brush from the smudge tool. If I uncheck texture, this is what the brush looks like. So it's pretty much the same as the last one in that it has a little bit of scattering, as you can see. Um, I have spaced out the brush tips a little bit. You'll notice it's a square head instead of a circle, although it would work just as well with a circle. But this texture setting, that's where things get really different. Now, what I've done is I've loaded in a grayscale image that's just a grunge texture. It happens to tile, and that's useful if you know how to do that. But what that does is it adds a overlay on top of the brush itself. Now, these settings are where the brush really starts to feel different. So I can change the blending mode to whatever I want, and really, you can see the result right away. So I just want something that is visible contrast. After that, you can change contrast, brightness, scale. All of these things are taking that source image you gave it and then are sort of modifying it. So you don't actually have to modify the source image itself. So let's see how this changes things. I'm on a new layer and I'm on sample all layers. And you can see that immediately it's got that transition, but it's got a little bit of grit to it, which is very nice. Now, if I blow out the contrast, so it's 
you know, very high contrast, it is almost it's really hard to blend. You can see a little bit showing up there, but I'm pressing really hard and it's, it feels like it's not doing much. So if I lower the contrast all the way till it's almost just solid black, now that same amount of pressure has a huge impact. So just the contrast of the image itself without changing any of the other settings really has a big impact on the way this feels. But just like before, what I'm going to be doing is just balancing a variety of factors, mainly here in the texture tab, to get it feeling the way I want. The general rule of thumb I found is that the lower the contrast, the more responsive the brush is going to feel, and it'll feel a little easier to control. Um, if you're getting visible jagged edges like I am here, that's generally a spacing issue, so I'm going to lower my spacing a little bit. But mainly, the feel comes from this texture tab. So based on the image you load in and the various settings you do here, you're going to end up with a brush that just starts feeling good. Don't expect it to happen immediately, but it, you know, you'll get there eventually. And when you do, this is when you just make a new tool preset. I'm going to call this one Mixer 2. And then you can just switch to that tool without worrying about losing any of these settings. So if I wanted to you know, switch to a, a brush and then immediately back to that mixer, the tool presets are really nice for that. Now, I know this was a lot of information, so you might want to watch this video a couple times, but definitely spend a week with this. Just like you did last week with the smudge tool, this has its own unique feel, and it's not going to feel natural right at first. In the next video, I'm going to compare all three blending methods and kind of give a demonstration. So that will be most beneficial to you if you've spent some time with these first. So get out there, make some mixer brushes, and thanks for coming to the site, guys.